In this video, I'm going to talk to you about creating histograms and frequency diagrams. Um, these are really useful tools. Uh, we use them quite a bit in statistics, and so here I have kind of a basic example to just show you the steps. So first thing I did was pull open the data called in the houses, which you've got available to you as well. Then what I did was I created the categories that I wanted, or the bins, if you will. So I just sort of looked at the data and I determined that I wanted four, five, six, seven, and 800 as my bins. And later in the course we'll get into how to create the bins, but you know, the, to determine the intervals. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and type in um, these classes, if you will. So you can see I've got here 400 and 500, and I just wanted to show you, if you just grab this corner, you can drag it down and that'll take you up to 800. So now we've got our bins, if you will, uh, that we want to classify our data with. So the next thing you want to do is you want to go up here to data, notice this data here, and then you want to go all the way to the far right where it says data analysis and we want to click the down button here on that and then we want to choose histogram so once we've chose histogram we're going to first have to highlight our input range now our input range is going to be this whole range that covers the house prices so we're going to click on the word house price and we're going to hit uh, control shift in the down arrow and that's going to highlight everything down to number 37 which is the bottom of our column here and our bin range now that's going to be uh, here in C and since it's just a few I just drag dragged it down and ours has labels so we're going to go ahead and click the labels and then you want to click on this button output range and we want to tell it where we want our output range to be sometimes it'll try to over copy something but and then we want to look at these things down here which ones of these would we like to have well we definitely need to have chart output or else we won't get a histogram and if we want it to be sorted by the most to the least we would click this Pareto but in this case we don't really want that we want to just see our normal um, almost bell curve shaped histogram so we hit OK and there we have it so what this tells us is we have four in the bin of 400 you know they go from 400 to 500 then we've got 11 that go between 500 and 600 etc so now if we want to go over here and adjust our histogram we can also mess with that a little bit um, that you're going to want to do when you do your presentations so there's a lot of different things you can do here with this but um, you want to probably in, in my case I would want to remove this because I don't I don't really need that and that will allow this to to expand out just a little bit. I had to squish it over here to the side. Now if you look up here at the top you can see there are quite a few options available to us and as you scroll over them you see the different um, possibilities. I often like something like this where I've got the numbers in there. That's a useful thing. But you can also go into here you could add a solid fill or a gradient picture, whatever, or this is the border, or if you want lines, whatever. Um, another thing has to do with the transparency and the um, width of the columns here. So you see I clicked on the width, or I clicked on one of these columns, and then it gives me a choice on the gap width. So if I wanted a big gap width I would do that if I wanted it small and big fat you know columns here um, and then this is the overlap we've got it where we have none we can change it to here 
And then we can also mess around with the fill, which I was just telling you. But if you went into, say, solid fill, you can change the color, um, which you can't see. I'm going to have to scoot this over here. Here you go, um, at the far side. Maybe I can just scoot it in like this. There we go. I got it a little bit better so you can see it. So um, the color is here. If you wanted to change the color to blue or whatever, it'll change them all. Um, and so these are just you know, some of the options that you might want to be aware of. But the, the big thing here is understanding how to use a histogram and how to make one using Excel. This is kind of a beginning step. So I hope this was a simple, easy thing for you to understand, and you can apply this to your homework. See you soon. Bye.